security. And this question is going to go for everyone, starting with you, uh, Dr. Omoye. There's been agitations across the southeastern region. Uh, there has been a threat from uh, the indigenous people of Biafra that the people of Anambra State should not come out for the election. The security agencies have stood up against it, made arrests. Should you become the governor of Anambra State, how would you handle this threat that is, uh, that is prevailing this region? If I become governor of Anambra, I have to engage these young men and women positively. Most of them don't have jobs. Most of them don't have what they're doing. Most of them are feeling that Igbo men, Igbo men and women are annihilated, are being marginalized grossly. That might be right, that might be wrong. But I believe my people deserve a fair share in the federal government. And Igbo man should not be sidelined anywhere in the world, including this government. I'm, if I'm elected the governor of Anambra, I will create jobs. A hungry man is an angry man. A man roaming in the street, he learned how to trade. He could not have money to start. He went to school, he could not get employment. He went and did vocational stu uh, 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 studies, uh, uh, activity like plumbing and coal, no money to take off. If I'm a governor, I will engage them, I will discuss with them, have to find them jobs, have to give them grants to start business, some other land businesses, I have to find them employment, both at the state and the national level. That is why, as I'm talking to you now, I have it on record that within Within the past three years, I've given more than 150 men and women employment in different federal government centers, even when I was not even in the House of Reps. So what these young men are doing are saying, they are not wrong. They are saying that they are frustrated. They are saying that our people are, are saline and marginalized. They should not be shoved. God, they should not be declared rebels. They are not rebels. They are brothers and sisters. When I was now president, the best way to engage young men once that agitation. Remember that I came from activism. Remember that I fought suppression and injustice all my life. In fact, I'm part and parcel of them because I share their grievances. I'm saying that if I'm elected the governor of Anambra, I will engage them, I will give them employment, I will give them grants, I will make some of them to be responsible. Some of them are not responsible. Some are responsible. So what I'm saying that government should not ignore them. Rather, government should engage them and make them to live a better life. Thank you. Thank you. So the same question goes to you. Uh, do you see that the IPOB is uh, gradually becoming a big threat in this region? And how would you handle that situation of that agitation in the uh, region? Uh, let me make the following points. There has been a wave of agitation across Nigeria, in the southwest, in the south-south, southeast, in the northwest, and what have you. What that simply tells you is uh, there's time to so sit down and restructure. That is the time to so sit down around the table and listen to the point. And uh, to do so, you will, uh, to do so, uh, what APGA stands for, for the people of the Southeast and people of like minds, it represents that, look at the Anambra State Government, the jobs we are creating for, the, you know, you didn't ask questions on that. We have created 600 plus, 600,000 plus jobs. Huge in agriculture, trade and commerce, oil and gas, industrialization. These are, these, are, these, are, these, are what, these are what my brothers uh, IPOB uh, uh, want. You know, we sympathize with their point. They, they are making good points, marginalization, that's very good. Uh, we are not getting the employment, our right. are abandoned by federal government, Thanks. that's fine. But that is not the way to go. A, 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 a proper democratic process that is Africa will go there and democratically win some of those uh, agitations that right. they think that they are making. Thank, Thank you so much. Is it you have the floor now. Same question, how would you handle, and do you even see it as a major threat in the region? Well, Sherry, well, I take this from the point of the Constitution. It is most regrettable that what happened, happened. Before IPOB, we've had militancy in the Niger Delta. They were never declared terrorists. We have the Fulani headsmen. They were never de declared terrorists, and none of them were proscribed. I do not understand how this governor can sit here and young Igbo men who are not employed, who are looking for a source of livelihood, are branded terrorists and pros proscribed. Look at it th this way. Those who make peaceful change impossible make violent change inevitable. You drive them on the ground, then you have to deal with the consequences. Perhaps we've had elections here over the years, even the election that brought him to office. 
IPOB never said, don't vote. Why did it happen on, this, uh, on, on his watch? Because it was mishandled. You have to have an adaptive government, a purposeful government. He has to accept responsibility for what is happening here. Our people are not happy. Our people are suffering. All right, thank you. Same question for you. The realization and the realities on the ground. Is IPOB becoming a major threat, and how would you tackle it? Thank you very much. IPOB is here. The agitation is here. We've got to face it. If you look at it from my own point of view, you will find out that IPOB uh, emanated out of the fact that the, the, the youth, the, the Southeasterners, has been marginalized, particularly with this administration. And nobody will feel good when you, when you deny him his right. What is supposed to the share, his share of the cake? He has got to say something. But besides that, in the previous administration, the Southeasterners occupied the choice ministerial positions in this state, because in this nation, I, have, I, I, I like being sincere and point blank. They occupied it. They didn't do much. They didn't offer anything here. Like this federal road we are talking about, they couldn't, they couldn't provide leadership in any way. They couldn't provide any leadership. That is why we're having problems. All of them were there as Minister of Aviation, Minister for Finance, Minister for Petroleum. What did they do with it? So at this dispensation, because of the fact that maybe we did, they said we did not vote, which does not make any sense to me, we were denied all what we are supposed, our own piece of the cake. Right. These youths are there, and what they are saying, you, you. You, you cannot take it away. It has to be addressed. All right. I believe if it is not addressed, is up, I mean it, it will keep it will keep uh, being a. a a big trouble that will face this uh, nation forever. Up. Mr. Chidoka, the same question. Do you think that IPOB and the agitation is becoming a major threat in the region? And how would you tackle it? Should you be given the opportunity to govern this state? Thank you very much. Um, I think that all my co-contestants here have taken ground that the problem of IPOB is a problem of unemployed youth. That is false. The problem of IPOB is a fundamental, structural problem with Nigeria. It has only manifested in a different form. It has manifested in this country under Masov in 2001. And Prem the chairman of Masov, was sentenced, was taken to court, charged to court, imprisoned, and was granted bail, and is still on bail till today. When Masov failed, people have forgotten that Nambi Khan was the London chairman of Abga. The whole idea of Abga was we wanted a party that would represent Igbo interest in fighting for the rights of Igbos in Nigeria. It was the failure of Abga. It was Abga turning into a money-making machine. It was Abga detracting from his function as a political party that would speak for the Igbo that led to the new wave of agitation. The people that are agitating all over the world are not unemployed. They are doctors, they are lawyers, they are engineers, Igbo people. They are saying that the feeling of impotence the inability, the construction of the Nigerian state, the Nigerian state that is existing now was not the Nigeria that our founding fathers founded. It wasn't the Nigeria that allowed All the right. people opportunities. So that Nigeria needs to be renegotiated. All right. It is not unemployment. Thank you so much.